I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. That was the oath of office which is sworn by every member of Congress when they assume their duties. Interestingly, there was some debate among the founders as to whether such an oath should be required. One of the criticisms was that the oath was pointless. A good man would keep it and a bad man wouldn't think twice about violating it anyway. That criticism seems pretty prescient these days. It appears there is indeed a distinct lack of true faith and allegiance in the same body that would pass a bipartisan omnibus spending bill festooned with kickbacks and pork. And of course, billions in funding for Ukraine. Increased military spending and defense funding for Ukraine were the reasons the so-called electable class of Republicans used to justify the omnibus. Statesmen like Mitt Romney explained that actually the omnibus is a pretty good deal for our men and women in uniform. I think a lot of Americans are starting to feel like our leaders no longer represent or serve our country. It's crystal clear that the left cares more about Ukraine's border than America's border. It's beginning to feel like our two political parties are on completely opposite trajectories, where one wants to defend the ship, prevent it from sinking, and the other party just wants to do all they can to add water to the ship so it sinks, while they sit on the top deck and sip cocktails and send aid to other ships. Meanwhile, the rest of the people on our ship in the lower bunkers are drowning underwater. It's certainly reasonable to assume that Biden is incapable of serving in a role for national defense. Republicans bring that up often. Biden's mental capacity. But this is, at the end of the day, a distraction from the fact that many Democrats, aside from Biden and Fetterman, are coherent, and they want America to fail. They want Americans to suffer. Why? Because it seems like the last thing they want to defend is our nation. How else can you explain the gaping holes at our southern border with endless masses of millions upon millions streaming across it completely unchecked? In any other country in the world, this kind of thing is recognized as an invasion. And what exactly is happening in Ukraine, then, that has sent our politicians up in arms? An invasion of Ukraine's border, which Ukraine knows cannot continue and must be stopped. Our attitude towards our southern border is not normal. In fact, many militaries around the world plan and train for contingencies like these. Contingencies where a neighboring country's government implodes and the resulting unrest threatens to spill across your country's borders. It's the kind of thing you do when you care about the well-being of your fellow countrymen is protect them, which is unfortunately not the kind of thing Democrats and Mitt Romney are into. These representatives are now touting this deal as if the logic isn't something to be extremely ashamed of. They talk about military spending as if the Afghanistan pullout never happened, as if we never spent thousands of American lives to free a distant country, only to have the Pentagon squander every last precious drop of American blood through their incompetence. No one is asking for more military spending. The Instagram Karens screaming over pronouns are more basket case than fighting force. Woke generals aren't the answer here. Throwing billions of dollars at Ukraine while fomenting tensions with a nuclear power like Russia only invites disaster. If push comes to shove, we will see a catastrophe so terrible, the service members who were kicked out and denied their benefits for refusing Biden's mandate would consider themselves lucky. We can joke about how silly this looks, that our Congress are like the peewee soccer players cheering after kicking the ball into their own goal, that Ukraine has less a chance of happening than fetch. But the fact is, these people aren't really that clueless and dumb. Zelensky knows exactly what he's doing. And what about the corruption? Well, the money is going to companies like Northrop, Raytheon, and Leonardo. And these companies will in turn donate big to the campaign coffers of these same congressmen who gave the omnibus the green light. It's the oldest trick in the American playbook. I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. But you'll notice that any time a politician gets caught red-handed in one of these schemes, the last thing you'll hear from them is remorse. No. Instead, they deflect the guilt right back at their critics. But we all recognize this trick as well. Glenn Greenwald noted that neocons and establishment Dems had begun to merge policies, tactics, and resources back in 2014. 
when National Review neocon Bill Kristol tried to paint anyone critical of Ukraine funding as a member of the anti-American right. Greenwald responded, saying, quote, The defining tactic of neocons has always been, and still is, to argue that anyone who doesn't support their war policies is unpatriotic, anti-American, and of suspect loyalties. That's what they did throughout the Cold War, the War on Terror, and now on behalf of the Democrats. Literally no faction has done more damage of every kind to American life and to the world over the past several decades than neocons. That they're now in a complete alliance with the Dem Party and Democrats are trained to use their tactics, says it all. End quote. And if you squint really hard and look back at how the neocons lambasted the anti-war left as unpatriotic back during the Iraq War days, you really do start to see the nascent form of cancel culture. But who is really being unpatriotic here? Bill Kristol brought the topic up, so let's humor him for a moment. What is the function of the United States military? It's a defense force. In fact, the common defense of the colonies was the reason the Second Continental Congress established the Continental Army in 1775. Now ask yourself, which of these two is a part of America? Texas or Ukraine? Now ask yourself, which flag was honored in Congress last week? The flag of Texas or the flag of Ukraine? It seems to me that if we go by the strictest definition of the word patriot, then this group of political positioners Greenwald has been warning us about are far less patriotic than their critics. Critics who, on the left, want to avoid sending more young people to die for corporate kickbacks, and on the right, want to defend our own country from being ripped apart by the forces of unchecked crime and chaos. Moreover, the omnibus also has several limitations built into it that prevent money from being spent to fortify our southern border, which is shockingly unpatriotic. It is literally anti-defense. The $45 billion for the defense of Ukraine now brings the total amount of money spent on that one country to nearly $100 billion for the year. But not a penny of American money will fund a border wall or expedite the deportation of illegals. Like the years prior, 2022 has been a very strange year. Many of us were shocked and offended that a foreign leader stood before our representatives demanding billions more of our taxpayer dollars to defend a nation embroiled in decades of corruption, much of which has been facilitated by none other than Hunter Biden. We were also shocked to see those same representatives enthusiastically promising even more support, all while waving the flag of that foreign nation. And by its very nature of being unimaginable, we are brought face-to-face with exactly how much our government cares about the American people. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but the idea that you are going to leave our country vulnerable while spending more on a country we have no treaty or pact with seems a gross violation of the oath of service. Putting the needs of another country ahead of the needs of our own also sounds like the furthest thing from patriotic. 